Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Alyssa Montagna, and I'm the Regional Sales Manager here at Spivy. Today, we're super excited to present creating a winning indoor cycling class profile, which will be presented by myself and Joey Stabile, Master Instructor at Cycling Fusion. From the Spivy team, I'd also like to introduce Nir Hassan, Chief Technical Officer, and Ofra Sagoli, Head of Customer Experience. Since this webinar is geared towards instructors, we wanted a place where you can share ideas, have open discussions, and upload and share your structured workouts. You can find all of this on the Stuvi Instructor Arena, which is on Stuvi.com, under the Instructor tab. We invite you to create your own class profiles and share them with us. Our master instructors will review your workouts and we will share them on the arena for all instructors. In addition, the best profiles will be recorded on the Spivy system and uploaded to YouTube. After the webinar, we will share a class profile, including audio and new features you can use in your classes on the instructor arena. And soon, we will start to share a weekly class profile that you can download and use in your classes. So stay tuned. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions, um, please make sure to ask those at the end because Joey and I may cover them throughout the time. So now, without further ado, I'm going to pass it off to Joey. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Joey Stabile. And today we're going to talk a little bit about putting together a class. Um, all of the information that you're going to see here today is part of our brand new SPIVI certification that's going to be coming out later this summer. It's a project that we've worked on with the SPIVI people, and um, we're really excited to be able to offer this kind of customized um, workout for you. As you can see in the background here, um, we have one of our pre-programmed classes playing, and uh, um, it's really what makes the difference in our overall customer experience and our retention. Um, and so let's start off with that as our first item, retention. At the end of the day, we all need to remember that even though cycling is our passion and that we enjoy it, this is a business as well. And as such, we have to be sure that when we get new clients in, we keep them. And how do we best keep new clients? That's by having them see real results from the classes that we provide them. And so how do we go about that as instructors? Well, we'd like to take a look at it from the aspect of real cycling and real training. While certainly our classes can be fun and our classes should be enjoyable, they should also have a very specific training purpose and they should be designed to produce real results within the riders. So how do we do that? One of the things we have to be cognizant of is periodization. Um, periodization is a way of determining the effort and intensity that each individual class is going to have, okay? So once we look where we are in the periodization schedule, which I'll discuss here in just a second, then we want to determine the effort and intensity that is specific to that stage in periodization. From there, we want to work on the importance of cool down, warm up, and recovery. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the effect of cadence on the body. Okay, periodization, what is it? Periodization is a system of balancing volume, intensity, and specificity of training, okay? It provides balance between training volume and training intensity. As many of you experienced instructors know out there, it is very difficult to keep any participant at full 105% of your FTP for an hour long class unless you really provide them some ample, train, ample um, recovery time in between or you shorten the class time to be maybe 30 minutes. And so as you can see on your screen there, there's a graph. On the left side, we have training volume being very high and intensity very low. And as we go through, the training intensity increases. As the intensity increases, the volume decreases. So this is really how we train for outdoor cycling. Now, generally in the outdoor world, we perform this type of periodization over a 12 month or year period. I know what you're thinking. There is no way I am going to be able to get my indoor riders to sit back and do low zone training consistently for two or three months while they're waiting to build their base. I agree with you. It's a very difficult type of thing. So we've adopted the periodization, periodization model for indoor cycling to a seven or eight week cycle. Okay. The way we like to work that is that we build upon the weeks that are before us. So week one might be cadence work. 
So cadence work builds the neuromuscular connection of your riders. It builds their um, coordination, and it allows the, egg, the legs to perform exactly. Week two, speed work and threshold work. Now, how does this build on cadence work? You have to be able to maintain some very specific cadences, and you have to be able to work at a pretty high level at those cadences to be able to work on managing your threshold. Again, for speed and threshold work, we generally want the cadences to be 90 or above, and we want to be able to operate just below that upper threshold level or lactate threshold, which most of you know it as. Weeks three and four, we try to work on muscular endurance. So we slow down the intensity a little bit, but we increase the volume. This allows the riders to build their base. Weeks five and seven is where we charge into strength work. In strength work, the cadences become a little lower, the tension becomes a little higher, and as it would imply, we're working on sheer strength for the riders. As we come through all of that, in week eight, we put it all together as explosive strength or interval workouts. So in these type of workouts, the individual riders will be able to use their speed and threshold work Hopefully the muscular endurance work will have been strong enough that they have a broad enough base to make it through the entire workout. Hopefully they've worked hard through the strength workout so that they can find new wattages that they're pushing in terms of the um, top of the interval work. And of course, the cadence work helps them to maintain the exactness of their legs. After that, we usually recommend a recovery week or a mixed ride to allow the riders to come back and kind of reset. Okay, so you've heard me say the term cadence um, numerous times through the first four minutes or so. Cadence or RPMs, as most bikes display it, is really half of the equation to what type of training you're going to be doing through your ride. Two real um, factors that determine the type of training you're doing. One is RPMs or cadence. The second is intensity level. At Cycling Fusion, we did a study about seven years ago with Carl Foster from the University of Wisconsin, one of the foremost authorities in endurance athletics. And we developed an entire chart that comes through and shows you if you are performing at a particular cadence range and you have a particular intensity, you are going to produce the outlined physiological response in the body. So for example, as we see the chart, if you want to work on aerobic fitness, you're really going to want the cadence to be 85 or above, and you're probably going to want to be right in that zone three or moderate work level, probably around 80 to 85% of FTP. Now, if we take that same work and up the intensity a bit into zone four or sub threshold, now, all of a sudden, we're working on threshold management. Again, same cadence range, but we've upped the intensity, so really we have a great opportunity to um, work on our, and manage our threshold. Now, what happens in that same cadence range? If we push up the resistance a little bit more, we end up in anaerobic capacity work. One of the things I always like to put out when talking about this is once you perform anaerobic capacity work, you've crossed over your threshold, you're creating an oxygen debt within the individual rider system, aerobic endurance all the way back down in zone two is not truly possible for development because again, we're operating at an oxygen debt. So until the body recovers and that oxygen debt is caught up, you really can't go all the way back on the scale to aerobic endurance. Therefore, when you're de designing your ride, if you are gonna have some anaerobic type of um, efforts, you wanna put those either at the end of the particular section or at the end of the workout, unless of course the entire workout is designed to be anaerobic in nature, in which case you can sprinkle them through out. But always remember, you're going to want to be able to have enough recovery after each effort. Okay, next, of utmost importance, working with music. I've been involved in the indoor cycling industry since the 1990s. Um, in my time with the indoor cycling industry, I will tell you that I have found two primary reasons why people come to your class. One is the time slot. I know, I'm sorry. Certainly we all do have followings, but generally it's the time slot. And the second primary reason is the music that you select 
for your rides. All right, music can be challenging, right? I spend hours a week listening to music to find new and different songs that I haven't used in a prior ride. The most important thing you can think about when deciding which music you're going to use for your rides is to know your demographic of your riders. Certainly, you want to be able to make the music that you select pleasing to the people that are in your class. Second most important part is the pulse, the BPM, which will then translate into the RPMs that you're going to use the music. It's one of my biggest um, things that I try to emphasize to new instructors is you really want the pulse or the beats per minute of the song to match the RPMs that you're working on in the studio. It's very important. Sec third, emotion and intensity. You want the piece of music that you select to match the drill and the emotion and intensity of the ride that you're trying to accomplish. Last but not least, instrumental versus vocal music. There are certainly times, especially during the warm up, when we may want to just use instrumental pieces and not have vocals. The reason for that is that as an instructor, as you're giving pre-class notes, describing to them the training focus of the class, the drills that you're going to use to hit those training goals, um, you don't wanna to have to compete with a vocalist or a singer. Okay, so again, you wanna choose music based on the intensity and emotion of the drill. And really, we try to use the music structure to our advantage. As we all have done in the past, you use choruses or solos perhaps for intense efforts. You wanna use quiet or softer sections for breathing and relaxation. One of the things we're gonna talk about um, a little bit later here, and Alyssa is really gonna hit on when I'm done going through the class building process is the use of a cue sheet or specifically the Speedy Workout Creator. This is a phenomenal tool and it will change you from being a good instructor to a rock star instructor. You always want to have your transitions on the bike match the transitions of the music. And what better way to do that than to have your cues and your avatars timed out to the music itself. Okay. So again, instrumental music for the warm-up, vocal music sometimes for more exciting work, even live performances for a race day type of a ride or perhaps some type of interval work. I know my riders always find it exciting if there's cheering in the audience going on in the song, it helps them get through that last maybe 400 meter sprint that they're trying to do at the end of a section. Okay, designing the ride, basic steps. One, we select the class objective or ride focus. This is super important that your ride has a focus and it has a purpose. Secondly, we select the drills that support the objective that we've selected. We design the profile and overall layout of the class. We go back to our drills and be sure that they support our objective. Then, even though it seems counterintuitive, the last thing we really do is select the music that supports those drills and work. We come back, build, and time the cues, which again, we hear and we hope that in time you will as well use the Speedy Workout Creator to accomplish this. And then last but not least, it's important to ride your ride at least once before it gets out to your riders so that you have an opportunity to review the timing that you've done, the intensity that you've used, and some of the cues that you want to show, okay? So I've heard it before from a number of instructors Cue sheets take a long time, and they do. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Now, the thing I will tell you is the Speedy Workout Creator, especially the newest version that's coming out here in a couple of weeks, makes the queuing process amazingly simple. You can time the cues down to the second, which means that as the bass drops and you come out of the saddle, your avatars will come out of the saddle, the cue sheets or the cues will come up on the screen, and the screen um, pitch of the road will increase as you have set it to. It's a dramatic effect for your riders. Um, and it makes it super easy rather than writing it down on the old note cards like we used to do and then inevitably somebody spills water on your note cards or they fall off of the front of the bike and then you're searching for them and now you're out of your cues. So the workout creator again makes this process much more e easily accomplished. But the thing to remember is designing and creating and queuing your ride is more about the process than the end result. Okay. When training for a marathon, the average person runs anywhere between five and 600 miles to finish that 26 at the end. 
really the 26th is just the icing on the cake. They've learned about themselves and their ability to perform through the five or 600 miles that they've done in preparing. The same thing applies to a cue sheet. As you prepare for your ride, as you get your music together, as you put the drills in and you time them out, it really gives you that opportunity to consider once again, the audience, the purpose, the structure, and the focus that you're putting into each individual cue. It's not uncommon for me when designing a ride to come back as I'm queuing it out and think, wow, I thought this was the best song ever for this area of the ride, but now that I'm working with it, I don't think it's probably my best choice, and so I'll go back and pick a different piece of music that I feel better um, accompanies the drill that I have in mind. Okay, again, I know it takes a little bit extra time, but quality and consistencies are the keys to repeatability. That is so important. One of the beauties is once you complete your ride and once you design it on the workout creator, that ride resides both on your personal machine and it is uploaded to the Speedy server. It's not uncommon for me if I'm teaching more than one class during a day to go back into the archives, pull out a ride that maybe I did five months ago so that if there is somebody that has attended both rides, they don't have to see the same ride twice. So again, it's worth the extra time because once it's created, it's there for you forever. Um, we like to say at Cycling Fusion, common language, common tools means common success. And what we mean by that is stay on top of it and really keep the people um, engaged and um, they will love it. Okay, so when we're talking about overall objective, what are we looking at? Active recovery, not a huge ride unless you have a dedicated training group. Aerobic endurance, aerobic fitness, muscular endurance, threshold management, muscular strength, anaerobic capacity, neuromuscular work, which is the cadence work we talked about a little earlier, um, a mixed ride, which is exactly as it sounds, and the last category, let's not forget specialty rides. This is maybe a Halloween ride or a Valentine's Day ride, or um, I've seen some rides you know, through the decades where let's say you pick song from the 70s and then the cadence is in the 70s, a song from the 80s and this cadence is in the 80s and so forth. Okay? Once you do that, you design the profile and layout. Okay, keeps this in mind, a few guidelines. Anaerobic efforts require recovery afterwards. Muscular endurance and strength efforts may span several segments to have an adequate effort. Just because a song ends at three minutes and 30 seconds doesn't mean the working effort has to. Recovery can be complete or active. And always remember your largest fitness gains happen in zone two and zone five. Okay. From that, you select the drills that support your objective, whether it's going to be intervals, pace lining, pedal stroke drills, spin-ups, testing metrics, seated climbing, standing climbing, attacks, cadence work, steady state work, or sprints. Always remember, in outdoor cycling, there is no such thing as a seated sprint. That is called a breakaway or an attack. A sprint is out of the saddle, maximum tension to produce maximum wattage. From there, as we said, we select the music to support the drills. Really try to have the BPM match the cadence required for the drill. Use instrumentals for warm up. Cool things down with softer music. And don't be afraid to mix up the musical styles. Um, last thing I'm going to hit on is the warm up. The warm up is super important. We need to bring the riders' body temperatures up, we need to bring their heart rate up, and we need to get them ready for work. Now, what I'm going to say here is going to shock you a little bit. Warm-up should be 8 to 15 minutes. Now, what I don't mean from that is that we're going to sit in the saddle and soft pedal for 8 to 15 minutes to music that has no lyrics. Usually, that's the very first song. It's two or three minutes just to get the riders ready to go. From there, we warm up with purpose. So the next two or three songs that we use to bring the riders up to speed and up to temperature should mimic the type of ride we're going to do for the day. So if we're going to do speed work for the day, we want to have some accelerations that pick up our um, cadence. If we're going to do climbs, we maybe want to have a few openers where we hit some lower cadences and some higher tension, but then release, spin out the legs, and go back and do it again. Remember, always warm up with purpose. As always, at the end of class, cool down and stretch your people. Ideally, you want to provide between three and five minutes of time before they dismount the bike. The Speedy system automatically provides us with five minutes of cool down as it shows the statistics at the end of the ride. Okay, last but not least, 
test your ride. Again, super important. So in summary today, looking at what we've talked about, quality and consistency are truly the keys to repeatability. We want to use common language, common tools, and that will lead to our common success on and off of the bike. A good class is truly worth the, worth the effort. And here, we're going to have Alyssa come back on and show you how very easily the Speedy Workout Creator can make this effort for you to produce the ride that will have your riders clapping and wow as you get off. Hi, Joey. Thank you so much. So with the Spivy system, you have the ability to fully customize your own personal structured workouts. And now it's with video and audio from the web or from local files. We want, uh, we want to give you all the instructors, the tools necessary to provide an amazing experience for your riders. We embrace your creativity and your coaching style, and you can ensure that your members are getting the best of the best when they're in class with you. I'll go over the workout creator tool, which is this, some new features that we've added, and then I'll show you a demonstration. Uh, so with that, I'm excited to talk to you about Spivy's workout creator tool for creating class profiles, or as we like to call them, structured workouts. To put it simply, the workout creator tool is a really easy and effective way to teach according to your specific workout goals for any given class. The Workout Creator is a desktop application that's available for both Mac and PC so that you can create your workouts at home or on the go and then use them in your studio. You have the ability to create a structured workout, upload it directly to your individual studio account on the Spivy Cloud, and you now have the capabilities to share your workouts with multiple studio locations. Then when you're in your studio, play your uploaded workouts using your Spivy system. To create a new structured workout, you're gonna to go to File, and you're gonna select the relevant workout. You can choose between new max heart rate and cadence workout, new FTP workout, FTP and cadence workout. I'm gonna show you a little bit of what the max heart rate and cadence workout looks like today. First, you're, want, you're going to want to name your workout. So I'm gonna name it Bivy Demo Workout. We're going to also add author's name. So let's do Spivy Team. You can tag your workout using hashtags. So let's do demo, let's do DJ and BJ, and then if you wanna write a short description as well. So now that you have gotten that complete, you're going to want to begin to add your blocks. So the bottom left, there's a plus button. This is where you create the blocks. So you can add them in. It's also great because you're able to use keyboard shortcuts. So let's say I wanna copy and paste one, that's available as well. If I wanted to delete a block, I can delete a block using the keyboard or I can delete it down here. There's also the availability to move the blocks up or down just according to what you're looking for. Then you're gonna to wanna to give a unique name to your specific block. So let's say the first block I want to add in warm up. The next block, let's say I'm gonna add in interval. And then let's do recovery and let's do cool down. So let me delete this block. And again, standard keyboard shortcuts or the X on the bottom. And then once you're within a block, within the block editor here, you're gonna be able to see duration, intensity zone, percentage of max heart rate, cadence, position, and gradient. So let's say the duration we can keep for a minute. Intensity zones, once you go ahead and click on these, you'll be able to see that the histogram on the top will change as well as the different zones. For this purpose, let me keep it at one. You can also change the values, either a single value, as you can see right here, or a range of values. Then for position, you can have seated climb, seated flat, seated climb, standing flat, standing climb, and again, gradient as well can be changed. So just depending upon what your specific workout goals are is what you would choose. Let me add a couple more. And then again, standard keyboard shortcuts to copy, paste, delete. But let's say I wanted to do zone two. As you can see, it changes at the top. So from there, now you know how to do the blocks the workout editor, the block editor itself. If you go ahead, you can also do events. So on the bottom, 
right here, if you do the plus button, you can see that there's start time, local time, duration, type, and parameters. With this, you're able to add notes to your writers. So let's say I wanna make a note that says, let's go. That's gonna be shown on the screen as well. You can also add different metrics views, such as the leaderboard, the power view, cadence and heart rate as well. And let's say I wanna show cadence view. I can do that as well. I would just change the time and then everything else would be adjusted. So this, this right here is really wonderful to utilize in class because again, you can, with the structured workout, run the challenges, add the notes if you want to do like a little bit more, want to be a little bit more involved in giving them cues, you can always do that through the, val through the notes section of that. And then, let's see, we want to discuss some of the new features that we have within the new workout creator. Um, so some of you may be familiar with this, others may not, but we do have the ability now to do audio playlists. So with the audio playlist, you can go ahead and search from the web. You're able to use YouTube or SoundCloud, and then it plays directly from the Spivy system in your studio. So right here, if I go to this, I can go ahead and add the URL that I want for the audio files. I can also add a title as well. So it's just something so that you keep this in order for yourself. Again, if I wanted to choose any of my local files, this is something that I could do right here, for example, just so you have the option between the two. There's also video playlists, which is super cool because now you can play almost any video that you can think of. Again, it can be local files or it can be from the web, so YouTube and SoundCloud. Again, this is where you're gonna be able to add a title. We also have a little portion down here, which is crossfade. So this makes it a smooth transition between your audio and your video as well. We've also added one additional element, which you can find at the top, it's synchronized. So this menu will allow users to synchronize all their playlists with each other. The most useful one will be synchronizing the audio playlist with the workout blocks. In the event that you created the blocks first and you want a skeleton for your playlist timing. If you create the audio files first, the synchronized workout with audio playlist option will be there, the best choice to generate the block skeleton based on your audio playlist. So this part's really cool to be able to utilize to sync everything. Um, in order to save your structured workouts, you're going to want to choose File, Save As, just make sure it's an SPW file type, and then I can save this to my desktop. If I wanted to, if you wanted to create a summary document of your workout, you would just choose File, Export to PDF. And again, just make sure it's PDF, you save it to your computer. When it pops up, it's gonna look like this. So it's everything that you have created, which is nice to be able to reference a little bit before class so that you know exactly where you're headed throughout the class with your writers. Once you're done with that and you've saved the file to your desktop, you're gonna to want to go to the My Studio on spivvy.com. You click the structured workout link you choose the file to select the workout you wish to upload to your Spivy system. Select that file. Select that file, which is the structured workout file. Once the file has been uploaded successfully, it will be added to your list. So now let me segue into showing you what a structured workout will look like. And see what blocks you created with that unique name will show up here on the left. You're all able to see your specific cues that you created on the left hand side and the top. It will cue you 10 seconds before a different block has been created. And the little circles on the bottom are going to be displayed for you to be able to see where your riders are within each given zone. So by the green, they're within the zone. If they're in the red, it's a little bit above. So just wanna make sure that your riders understand where they're at within the zones. They're keeping within the green. And I think that's that's a little bit easier to tell your riders is to stay within the, a specific color.
Also with this, you're able to switch between different views for the metrics to use. So cadence, as we're displaying here, also able to share power and heart rate as well. So that's just something to consider. The histogram view on the bottom as well that just popped up is what you have so that your riders know exactly what's coming next. And yeah, just wanted to show you how cool it was to be able to add the audio, add the video in, have a seamless transition between both, and then have everything together so that your riders have a really cool ride with you. And again, this is just the transitions between the video. And then closer to the very end, you will see that you will have a cool down. Instagram view is on again. And now I'm going to pass it off to Joey. Welcome back, everybody. Um, wow, Alyssa, that's great stuff. We are so looking forward to the new workout creator coming out. Um, my understanding is that we should be able to go live with that by August at the latest. And, um, you know, we're building that into our certification. So let's talk a little bit about that and how this is all going to come together. Um, starting this summer, um, we have uh, a launch coming in just a couple of weeks for the first ever SPEEVY certification. Um, throughout that process, we are going to go through of course, the basics of bike setup and um, you know all of the things that you need to conduct and um, monitor a safe class. But about half of the time, we are going to spend working with music, building classes, and specifically working with the Speedy Workout Creator. Um, one of the things that we have been asked to put into the training by some of the um, instructors that we've talked to and um, we're going to do is the very last ride that we do that day will be designed by us in class, which e with each of the participants contributing a song that we'll put right into the Speedy Workout Creator, we'll upload it into the system, and then we'll ride. Um, until that time, what one of the things we're coming out with in July is a weekly ride service. So every week there will be a Speedy file that will be able to be downloaded into your system. It will already have a ride pre-programmed with both Apple Music and Spotify playlists that accompany the ride. Um, again, coming in August when the system is updated and ready to go, all of the rides will also have available a uh, YouTube functionality to it where the music and everything will play from within the Speedy ride itself. Um, one of the things we're really looking forward to is adding some video into the rides, not just the music videos, but some cycling videos on some epic climbs and um, those kind of bells and whistles that will really set us apart um, as if we needed anything else to set the Speedy system apart. Um, so with that, um, I want to wrap up by again emphasizing that um, the workout creator is an amazing tool that we should all really be taking advantage of. Um, at the conclusion of this podcast, um, I'm sure you will all get our contact information. We are certainly here for you to answer any questions that you may have, um, as well as the question and answer period that we're going to have here in just a minute or two. Um, one of the best parts about using the Speedy Workout Creator is it leaves our hands free to focus on our class and on our ride. Um, you know, the Speedy system can be complex, and if you're just adjusting the avatars and the pitch of the road and the RPMs manually as you're going through the ride, um, it, it takes a fair amount of attention to have it match what you're trying to do on the bike, and um, that pulls some of that attention away from the riders. And again, our end goal is really rider retention and the rider experience. And so by using the workout creator and having these um, functions relatively automated, it gives you that much more attention and energy that you can place into the riders. 
Awesome, thank you so much, Joey. Um, so now we're going to take some questions from you all. Thank you so much for asking, waiting till the end so that we can have this little bit of Q&A. So, Ralph, you answered, will this presentation be available for viewing at a later time? And yes, we are going to post this. We will send you a link more than likely um, once this has all been completed. So there will be availability for people who may have missed this to see it at a different time. Nir, do you want to go over uh, a specific question? So I'll take some questions here. So first with uh, Janine about uh, the mixture of uh, videos and the speed screen. So yes, you'll be able to create your own video playlist. Uh, and while you can have the playlist uh, to, uh, to take over the entire class, you can create specific uh, videos to appear in specific time during the class. So you can create a mixture of both the avatars and have also videos played uh, at specific times during uh, that class. So that's about the videos. Um, another question from anonymous viewer. Uh, is this uh, possible to use the FTP while planning the structure workout? So yes, we have uh, four types of classes that you can create with uh, the creator. You can create the general workout based on heart rate max for any aerobic training. So that's the first one with heart rate training only. You can create a mix uh, workout based on heart rate and cadence. That's the traditional spinning or indoor cycling classes. Uh, you can create a pure FTP a class only percentage of FTP are the targets and you can create a, a class uh, based on both percentage of FTP and your cadence. So they're all available in the creator and you can utilize the same uh, options as well for creating um, a playlist of both audio and video. Uh, another question I'm going to answer right now uh, is by Gerard. Will the arena system have similar features of the workout creator? So the answer is yes. You'll be able to use the, the same uh, workout creator to create videos and video playlists for your arena system. Uh, so that's coming on the upcoming version as well. What else? The demo video, the demo video as well as the entire class of this profile will be available on YouTube. Uh, so it's available right now if you go to the SPV channel uh, and the latest videos will be shown there. And that's it for me for now. So Mark, Mark, you asked, is there documentation available for the events portion of the workout creator? So yes, on the Spivy Academy, there is an entire section about the, the challenges that you can create as well, um, the challenges with the different coding for that, and then there is all the information for the events. So how to do all of the different views, how to add notes. So yes, all of that's available on the Spivy Academy if you just type in events. So Joey, Joey, I see that you are gonna answer a couple of them. Let me pass that off to you. Great, thank you very much, Alyssa. Um, so one of the questions was by Chris Smith, is the course open to everyone and how do we book into it um, from the UK? So um, our Speedy training course is um, just getting underway this summer here in the US. Um, we have two, two participant um, locations that are ready to go here, the first one in just a couple of weeks, and then the second one will be at the end of July. Um, so that'll kind of get our legs under us. Um, we do plan to have this um, available throughout the world uh, within the next probably six or so months. Additionally, there are plans to make the complete um, certification program available online. And um, we'll keep you posted as to how that happens. I'm sure that there will be some announcements coming out with the, um, with the SPV system for when that um, does come to fruition. But I know that we plan on doing some filming at the end of July for that online workshop. And then we plan on doing it again in September. So um, that's what we have for that. Um, the second question that I saw out here is about using Spotify. Um, I use Apple Music myself, and um, 
I realize that a lot of people use Spotify as well. Um, so using Spotify or Apple Music is just a hair trickier, but really no different with the workout creator. Um, the difference is that you have the playlist residing on your device and you have the workout creator blocks made up but no song tagged to them. So how I do that is I start my rides here, um, select the ride that I wanna do, have the playlist ready to go on my phone as well. Literally count down three, two, one, hit start on both the Speedy system and the phone playlist, and then the, um, the workout creator rides will be synced in with the playlist of your phone. One little um, trick that I'd like to share with you on that is generally, about one third of the way through and then two thirds of the way through my workout, I pick a song that has a four or five second um, less important part at the very end. And you know, once in a while we'll pick a song and if we're not on CrossFit or something like that, there's a few dead seconds at the end. So on those sections, I set the speedy workout creator block to be about two seconds shorter than the song. So when I come up to that block, I look at the time remaining on the block, look at the time remaining on the song, I hit fast forward on my playlist to the next song, which then resyncs up the future blocks. Um, this, is, this doesn't have anything to do with the limitation of the system. What you find is that in reality, when a song on either Spotify or Apple Music says that it's three minutes and 20 seconds, the truth is it's three minutes, 20, point something seconds and um, those point three, point five, point six seconds add up over the course of five or six songs. So again, about a third of the way through, I like to true it back up. And then about two thirds of the way through, I like to true it back up again, because you know, as I had said before, when that bass drops, I want my class, myself and the avatars to all come up out of the saddle and um, hit that hill. So I hope that helps. Alyssa, back to you. Awesome, thank you so much, Joey. Hey, Alisa, this is Ofra. I just wanna answer one question. Of course. It's a question regarding the cool down, the music in the cool down, if you can choose that one. So usually what we do at the cool down, we just play the first audio that you set on the playlist. Uh, it will come automatically, and once you have the cool down, the five minute, it will just repeat the um, audio playlist that you have set. Um, another thing regarding the um, demonstration in other languages, we are working on this at the moment. We have the academy in English and most of the demo, but we are working to add more lingual uh, adjustments. So stay tuned to that. Um, so in terms of the online videos, yes, so you can stream systems from YouTube, Vimeo, SoundCloud, um, if that, if there is the link that's applicable as well. And then in terms of using it from your personal files, you can use an MP3, an AUG, and WAVE. Yeah, I'll take another question here regarding the possibility to rewind or advance the, the workouts. So yes, it's already there in the system. You have to press the start button and then use the gamepad arrows to press it right to move forward and press left to rewind the program. And you can pause or play again by holding the start button and pressing on the down arrow on the Perfect. gamepad. Well, thank you so much for posing all of these questions to us. I hope that we did our best to answer all of them as well. Um, so, with that, Joey, I think there, I've covered everything I would like to. Is there anything else that you would like to cover before we kind of wrap that up? No, Alyssa, I thank you for your time here. Um, always a pleasure to uh, hear from our instructors and find out what their questions are and, um, you know, see how that we can help them in the future. Awesome. So thank you, everyone. We really appreciate that you were able to join us today. Um, after the webinar, again, please keep an eye out as we will be sharing a class profile with you, which will include the new features. And then lastly, we'd love to see your structured workouts. If you can, please hashtag us, Spivy Nation, then we'll be able to see all the structured workouts that you've created and we can repost those. So again, thank you so much for joining us today and we will see you next time.